Contact angles are one way of expressing how a liquid interacts with a solid surface. So if we have a solid surface and we put a liquid on it, we can characterize the interaction with this angle theta, which we'll call the contact angle. And we can imagine several scenarios for how a contact angle might look. We might have a drop that looks like this. So in this case, we have something that's completely non-wetting. On the other hand, we might have a surface where drops spread out to completely cover the surface. So we'd have our liquid and our solid, and this would be perfectly wetting. So in the case of perfect wetting, we have theta is equal to zero. In the case of perfectly non-wetting, theta is equal to 180 degrees. And in most cases, we have something in between the two, where theta is some angle between zero and 180 degrees. And the cutoff between wetting and non-wetting is something that has a 90 degree contact angle. So if theta is equal to 90 degrees, it's neither wetting nor non-wetting. An example of a surface that's not wetting is the lotus uh, effect, which is shown here with a, uh, a leaf. And we can see that the contact angle is almost 180 degrees, so almost perfectly non-wetting. And we can see that if we look the base of one of these drops, we can see that what's underneath the drop is not leaf but air. And so we can see that there's almost no contact between the water droplet and the leaf. And in fact, if we were to tilt this leaf, those droplets would roll right off. Lotus leaves stay above the surface of the water in a pond by having the water just roll off the edges like that. Something similar but different shown here with this rose petal. We can see in this rose petal, if we look at the contact angle, let's pick a place here, that it's a very, very large angle, close to 180 degrees. But in this case, instead of rolling off, the droplet's clinging to the petal. It's called the rose petal effect, or the petal effect. And so even though they are both non-wetting surfaces, their behavior is different. We'll be able to explain that if we look a little more in depth at contact angles, which we'll do over the next few minutes. Fundamentally, contact angles are a function of the interaction of the surface tensions involved. We can identify three different surface tensions. We can see that we have the surface tension of the liquid against the vapor. We have the surface tension of the solid against the vapor, and finally that of the liquid and the solid. And if we imagine just look zooming in on this, on this uh, intersection where all three phases meet, we can draw a force diagram. So we're just going to zoom in on that intersection here. So we have the surface tension of liquid and vapor, the surface tension of liquid and solid, and the surface tension of solid and vapor. And each of these, since they're tensions, are going to be pulling away from that three-phase intersection point. We'll go ahead and put the theta in here. And since that, at equilibrium, that point's not moving, we know that we can set up a, a force balance. The leftward force is going to be equal to the rightward force. So solid vapor is going to be equal to 
liquid solid plus liquid vapor times the cosine of theta, since we're only interested in balancing the x components here. We can solve this for the cosine of theta. You can see the cosine of theta is a difference. Gamma solid vapor minus gamma liquid solid all over gamma liquid vapor. This equation is called the Young equation. If we examine it, we can see some general trends at, uh, in wetting. You can see that if we have a surface energy for our solid vapor that is greater than for the liquid solid interface, then we're going to have a, a positive right hand side, which means that uh, since the cosine of theta is greater, is, is positive, that means that theta is going to be less than 90 degrees. So if we have a, and we can say that this is at least partially wetting, so if we have a high energy solid, we expect that uh, we will be able to wet that with the liquid. On the other hand, if the solid vapor interface is less in surface energy than the liquid solid interface, then theta, the cosine of theta is a negative number, which means that theta is greater than 90 degrees. And we have at least partial non-wetting. So what would be examples of this? Well, what if we had a very, very high energy surface, like a metal, and we put on some organic liquid with a low surface energy? We'd expect that we'd be in this situation. So we might have, for instance, hexane on some sort of ceramic or metal. Okay, so anything other than a polymer, we expect that we'd have a wetting situation, which is spread to wet the surface. On the other hand, if we had something like mercury with a very high surface energy and a solid surface that was low, so imagine we had mercury on some kind of polymer, say polyethylene. We know what's going to happen. The mercury is going to beat up. 